The University of California Merced, situated in the fertile Central Valley of California, the first modern research institution of the 21st century, destined to one day cover 815 acres and accommodate 25,000 students. Yet as of now, smack dab in the middle of a cow pasture. Welcome to the Central Valley and all its flat, grassy goodness. It might look born to those who associate nature with towering forests or unbelievable vistas, but even here there is a large ecosystem with several diverse creatures. Besides, if you're planning on spending four years here, it might be best to learn a little bit about your new neighborhood. We'll begin at Little Lake, a man-made watering hole that once had a career as a water hazard on a golf course that was here before the university. Now instead of frustrating old people wearing ridiculous clothing, it serves primarily as a gathering place for animals. We now join Catherine, who will tell us about the wildlife here, particularly the birds. Yes, birds. The wonderful creatures that fill the sky with song and happiness. Let's take a look at what kinds of birds can be found around Little Lake, shall we? So many birds. Alfred Hitchcock was trying to warn us. Ooh, there are some ducks over there. They may look like ducks, but they aren't. Those are American coots, a common water bird of North America. Coots are all black duck-like birds that inhabit a wide variety of lakes, ponds, and marshes. Unlike ducks, coots have lobed toes rather than webbed feet. Their large feet make them clumsy on land and their takeoff flight is even more awkward. Did you know a group of coots is called a raft? Why isn't it called something a little more awesome, like an armada? It just isn't, okay? Birds don't need to compensate for things using flashy titles. Now those are some noisy birds. Those would be the red-winged blackbirds, a familiar sight atop cattails like the ones around Little Lake. Very boisterous birds. Males perch on treetops or reeds to call for females. Only males have red patches and females are streaky brown. So the males are prettier than the females? Yes, and this is how it is for a lot of bird species. Fun fact, red-winged blackbirds, males, can puff up or hide their red shoulder patches depending on their confidence in finding a mate. You sure do love your birds, don't you? But aren't you forgetting about a certain terrestrial bundle of cuteness? Oh, this should be good. Like the bunnies. And we'd like to take this moment to speak on behalf of the contail rabbits. No matter how bored you might find yourself, please do not channel this energy into trying to catch the poor furry creatures. They don't need that kind of excitement and stress. Give them a friendly wave and leave it at that. Very inspiring, Ambassador Floppy Ears. That's Sir Ambassador Floppy Ears to you. Not on your life. It's time for us to be moving on anyway. Here is Lake Yosemite, a man-made reservoir created for farmers so that they can get their water during the hot, dry summer months. So it's a great place to go sailing, kayaking, and swimming. And of course, bird watching. Catherine here will talk about, ooh, eucalyptus trees. Hey, focus. I love these trees, always big and shady and good smelling. You know they're not native, right? Not to mention there's the threat of being hit by a straight piece of bark. These trees shed, you know. And I for one welcome our new Australian overlords. Well, I think some nice native oaks would do the job just fine. Try to be pragmatic, Catherine. Not many trees can grow out here in these grasslands. Eucalyptus serves us well as everything from windbreakers to sound bears to shady patches of paradise. Oak trees are far more deserving of praise than those piles of koala kindling. Oak trees provide food with acorns, nesting material, covers, hollows to live in, their prime real estate. Yeah, I know. Just consider me an all-around tree lover. Noted. Now let's get back on track. You know, Catherine, in the winter I have noticed a lot of birds flying over campus. That's because this area is part of the Pacific Flyway, a migratory pathway for many geese and other waterfowl. This route goes across the Alaska Peninsula and parallels the coastline of British Columbia, Washington, Oregon, and California. These birds are coming here all the way from Canada? What's that about? They are looking for suitable water grounds in California such as the Sacramento Valley, the Salton Sea, and in tidal marshes near San Francisco Bay. Not to mention the escape the cold of Alaska and Canada where many of them spend the majority of their life. Well, at least that's the idea. And look, there are some visitors right over there. Geese. Why did it have to be geese? Yes, Canada geese are considered pests by some, for they are seen in abundance inhabiting urban parks and sometimes even blocking traffic when crossing the roads. Even if they are considered pests, that's no reason to treat them with disrespect, and that goes with all animals. These hordes of geese seem to be lingering here. I thought the Central Valley was more of a stopover point on their journey south. Well, some migratory populations of the Canada goose don't go as far south in the winter as they used to. This northward rain shift has been attributed to changes in farm practices that makes waste grain more available in fall and winter, as well as changes in hunting pressure and changes in weather. Wonderful. Can we look at something that won't chase and bite me if I get too close? 
Well, as long as you treat them right, you should be okay. Let's go back to campus and see what other creatures we can find. Nightfall. When stars shine and the lantern glows, they come, determined, hungry. They're raccoons! And what's that like? Fur over their faces that looks like a mask, revered amongst several Native American tribes, usually as a trickster spirit, extremely sensitive to paws that lets them identify objects you touch alone. You're forgetting to mention claws and teeth, the possibility of carrying rabies, reduced fear of humans in urban areas. That's right, these are wild animals, and we'll tell you right now, don't feed them. No matter how fluffy they look, no matter how beady their eyes are, don't make them depend on you and used to your presence. It never ends well for anyone. Remember, we aren't the only ones here that call the surrounding area our romping grounds. Speaking of which... We're headed for the vernal pools. Grass. Far as I can see. Beautiful. Grass is very important to the ecosystem and is the foundation on which this community rests. It's sad to say that most of the grasses out here are invasive Spanish species originally brought here for grazing purposes. Of course, the most obvious non-native species here doesn't seem to mind. Bring in the cows! It's a shame they aren't our mascots. They're adorable. Adorably delicious indeed, Catherine. But I wouldn't recommend the night of cow tipping delinquency that you are so obviously formulating. They're residing on federally protective land. Get caught with the cows without a permit, get a stern talking to. Well, that doesn't sound so bad. And several hundred dollars worth of fines. So why are they allowed to stomp around in such a sensitive and protected environment? The special thing about the cows here is that they are believed to actually be beneficial to the vernal pool's environment. The current hypothesis is that the cows have replaced the large herbivore that used to roam here, elk. From what we can tell, they are doing the ecosystem good. Are you ready to move on? Catherine, that pun hurt. Anyway, puddles! These puddles, as you called them, are filled with life. There's an entire ecosystem in there. So reliving my days of boorish whimsy by splashing through them is not recommended? Afraid not, unless a few federal fences were also a part of your childhood. Well... Forget it. That's right, here we have some vernal pools. Amazing environments that only exist for about half the year. These pools fill up during the winter and spring rains and explode with life. Creatures like our almost mascot the fairy shrimp will go through their entire life cycle in about six months. Before the waters recede, females of several species lay eggs in the soil that lay dormant until the rains come again. Fertile pools are simply one example of Earth's extraordinary environments where species have evolved together to create an extremely complex and interconnected ecosystem. So now you should know what hides out there in the tall grasses. You aren't in the middle of nowhere. You're right in the center of a living, breathing ecosystem. There is beauty in life here, not just cow fields. We hope this video has shown you what the campus and areas surrounding has to offer, if you just know where to look. Thank you for your time and attention.